There's no accounting for taste. Dragon Buster is a beloved game in Japan, hailed as an all-time classic by their retro game fans, and it's absolutely terrible. I did manage to find a few Japanese players who hate the game, but they're rare. Dragon Buster was originally an arcade game from very early in 1985, so it's about two years old when it came to the Famicom. The arcade game is described as an RPG, though it's one of those cases where it's called an RPG because of the sword and sorcery theme rather than the gameplay. The Famicom version, on the other hand, actually has some very slight RPG elements. In the arcade, killing enemies just gives you score, but in the Famicom version, you get experience points. And you do get stronger with about every 10,000 experience you earn. Naturally, the story for this game is that you're a knight, and there's a princess that's been kidnapped by a dragon. Or dragons. And princesses. Because there's a dragon at the end of every stage, and every three stages, there's another princess you rescue. You start out on this overworld map, where you can choose your path through the area, and each of those spots are dungeons that you have to explore. The dungeons consist of these long corridors that have big rooms, and in every big room, there's a special monster that you have to defeat in order to continue. Defeating that monster also makes an item appear. Or if it's the final room of the dungeon, then an exit shows up. There isn't a huge variety of those mini-boss enemies. Once you've seen Fafnir, the small dragon, the skeleton, the wizard, and the bishop, then you've seen everything. And speaking of fighting, that brings me to the first utterly disastrous thing about Dragon Buster, the controls. The B button swings your sword. That's the easy one. Pressing the A button while moving left or right or standing still jumps. And while you're in the air, you can press down and B to stick out your sword. This is by far the most powerful and effective attack in the game. One problem with it, though, if you get touched by anything, you go flying in kind of a tumbling motion. That will knock you out of your sword chop, but even worse, there's no invulnerability frames, and the knockback tends to knock you into other things. So you can wind up spinning around in a circle for quite a while. But you can still swing your sword while flailing, and that might be enough to knock you clear of the damage area. If you double tap in a direction, you'll run, sometimes. The double tap actions have a very tight window, and as a result, they don't work very well. That includes the double jump. To pull it off, you have to jump a second time while you're going up. So in other words, you have to jump immediately after you jump, double tapping. Platforming in this game is a nightmare. Sometimes the double jump just doesn't work and you'll fall. Sometimes you're not aligned quite right and you'll fall. And sometimes the game just hates you and you'll fall. Many of the items you'll get from many bosses are one-use magical attacks. You pick which one you're going to use by pressing start to bring up the inventory. To use one, you have to press down and jump. And if this is something you can do in the air, I never managed to pull it off. Different enemies have different weaknesses, but really you shouldn't be afraid to use those items. There's only two of them that are any good against the dragon at the end of the stage. And the key strategy in Dragon Buster is stop loss. Minimizing the amount of damage you take as you go through the stages. So if you're down a little bit, use those spells up. It's good for you. The items that you can use that I encountered are the scrolls which shoot fireballs, the staves which shoot lightning bolts, the lamp which makes pillars of flame, and is one of the two items that will actually hit a dragon, the necklace which turns all enemies on screen into stone, and the grail which automatically completes the dungeon you're in. Completing a dungeon is one of the few ways that you can recover health, so unless there's an item you absolutely have to get out of that dungeon, use that grail just as soon as you enter a dungeon. There's a few other items that can appear. Gems just give you some experience points. The blue potion recovers health. They're not very common, though. And the orange potion is poison. There's also a few items that persist in your inventory, 
The shield reduces damage for a little while. The compass always points to where the exit in a dungeon is. One problem with that, dungeons loop horizontally and vertically. That makes mapping the larger ones a pain, and it makes the compass not particularly useful. The medical herb will refill your life bar when you reach zero. The gem will make a rainbow bridge appear so that you can cross over spots you've completed and backtrack in the stage. The key and axe are used automatically in the overworld map to clear a path for you. And finally there's the diary, which I couldn't find despite my best hunting. It's actually the most important item, too. The reason why is that it's the only way that you can continue the game. There's 12 stages in Dragon Buster, and it's brutally hard. But if you can find a diary, then you can always continue from that stage. The last region you can reach on the overworld is always the dragon. There's no dungeon, just the dragon. And you have to hit it in the head and neck to defeat it. They're often up and out of your way, too. Closing the distance when it's constantly breathing fire is tricky, but it's the only option. Once you're in close, swing like a madman. I can think of three possibilities why Dragon Buster is popular in Japan. First, if you complete all 12 stages, there's a Zelda-style second quest. On that one, when you rescue a princess, she's wearing a bathing suit. The second thing I can think of is the gold cart. Of course, that gold coloring had a tendency to wear off. The final thing is that the promotional poster for the arcade game is spectacular. Just look at it. If I was the kind of person who made YouTube videos with themselves sitting in front of a wall of nerd stuff, I'd want that poster behind me. No matter how painful I find Dragon Buster to play, it was still popular enough to get a sequel. The sequel's far less popular in Japan, though I actually think it's better. I find it's actually playable, for one thing. For the original Dragon Buster, though, nothing in this game really works right. The combat's terrible because you just get bounced around all the time. The enemies aren't any fun because of how random they are. The way the screen scrolls means that things are often on top of you before you can react. And the risk-reward balance for the dungeons is all out of whack. The optimal strategy is to not get anything. Really, there's no getting around that Dragon Buster is a bad game. No matter what retro fans in Japan may say.